Hi, welcome to the last lesson of the Web Development Bootcamp. Today I'm going to walk you through how to put together some of the stuff that we've been working on in a dashboard. Um, and what this dashboard is going to be is it's going to show you um, the headlines from several news sources or whatever that you would like to look at as well as uh, show you maybe the weather in your location or something along those lines. It's not going to be the most useful thing in the world, but I think it'll be pretty cool and you're going to enjoy it. Uh, more importantly, it's going to show you um, uh, how to put together a lot of the stuff we've talked about, as well as probably introduce you to a few new things that can get you thinking. Um, so with that, let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I'm already in my bootcamp directory with my Vagrant file here. I'm, I think the Vagrant machine is already running. Yep, so let's SSH in. Um, hopefully all of this is becoming really familiar to you now. So now we're going to CD into slash Vagrant. We're going to CD into the projects directory that I created. You can CD into whatever you want to. Um, and I'm going to create a new app called Rails uh, Dashboard. Okay, so now that we know that the app is set up, um, I'm going to run a couple of commands and get some uh, some code set up for us. So first of all, we're going to create a, uh, a controller. So we're going to do Rails G controller, and we're going to call it dashboard, and I'm going to give it an index action. And this is a little bit different than what we've done before. What this is going to do is it's going to create just the controller and it's also going to create an index view to go with the index action in the controller. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So run this and it's going to take a second. Okay, now let's go back and open up the code in Sublime Text. So I've already got it open. Um, you can do the same thing we've done before. Go into your directories, open up the folder. Um, that should be old hat by now, hopefully. Um, so if you look in here in the app and you look in the controllers, you have this dashboard controller with an index action already on it. And if you look in the views, you have a dashboard with index. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the config. And remember, we talked about routes in a previous episode. I'm going to add this right, right here. Root dashboard index. What this is going to do is this is going to put the root path at dashboard controller index action. So now if we come in here, we run rails s, we can come back over here to localhost 3000, refresh it, um, and you see you're on the dashboard page. Before we go any further, I want to get Bootstrap set up in our app. And if you don't know what Bootstrap is, it's a CSS JavaScript framework that uh, will basically just help you get your app looking really good a lot faster. Um, we, we may go into more detail on this later, but for now I just want to get it set up and show you how to do a few basic things. Um, the gem that we're going to be using to do this is at this location, GitHub. TWBS bootstrap dash sass and then if you want to learn more about this there's incredible documentation at getbootstrap.com anyway so let's go ahead and get this set up so go back to the code um, and we're gonna go down into this gem file and I don't think we've really messed with this before um, but just go ahead and drop this in right here doesn't really make any difference where save this file and then before uh, you do anything, make sure you stop the server and then run bundle install. And this is going to take a second, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so my gems just finished installing. Um, and you can see here that we have installing Bootstrap SAS and it was successful. Um, so I was just going through the documentation for this gem. And this is, anytime you, you're using a gem, you really need to go through the documentation and see how they suggest that you use it. Um, so this is new, I think. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in here too. I'm working through this 
live, so I uh, haven't really gone through this before. So you, I wanted you to kind of see how I actually would do some development. Um, anyway, so we're going to come back in here. We're going to run the bundle install again. And that's going to take a second, so I'm going to pause again. Okay, so we're back, and it looks like installing Auto Prefixer Rails was successful. So let's go back to the documentation again. Um, and the next thing they suggest is putting in these two lines here. So I'm going to copy these, add import bootstrap sprockets, and add import bootstrap. And we're going to put them in style sheets application.css.scss. So if we come up in here and we look in assets, in style sheets, style sheets, excuse me, you'll see we have application.css. So I'm actually going to rename this. Um, and you need to do this uh, because uh, Rails, in this case, we're going to be using SAS instead of just regular CSS. Um, I'm sure that most people don't quite understand what that means yet, but don't worry about it. Um, we haven't really talked about this yet. So just go ahead and do this. Copy that in, paste it, save it. Um, and then let's start the server and see what we've got. Let me check really fast and make sure there's nothing else we need to do. It looks like that's all of the basic setup. So the server is running and let's check and see what we got. So if we refresh this page, we should see the font change. That's what I'm expecting to happen. Yeah, so Bootstrap uses a different font than your normal default browser font. Um, if we check, if we inspect the element, or the page rather, and we come in here and we look in the head section, we should see um, application.js. Um, sorry, application.css is what we're actually interested in looking at. And you can see we have a ton of CSS in here, and this is coming from Bootstrap. This is not something that we have written, obviously, thousands of lines of CSS. So anyway, you get a lot of stuff for free, and uh, it's really nice. So go ahead and get that installed, and then we'll move on. All right, so let's get started doing some real development. So let's go back in here to our terminal, stop the server with Control-C, um, and then I'm going to generate some scaffolding. So I'm going to do this, uh, I've already kind of run through this on my own a little bit to kind of get a feel for what we're going to do. Um, and I'm going to walk you through kind of my thoughts on some stuff and uh, hopefully this will be helpful. So we're going to generate a scaffold. Um, we're going to call it website. And you'll see what this is going to be in a minute. We're going to work off of the some of the stuff we did in the first programs and some of the exercises. Um, so we're going to do we're going to create a website with a, a name which is a string and a uh, identifier which is also a string. Okay. So hit enter. Um, then we're going to create um, a another one. Rails G, uh, let's call this one weather, and we're just going to give it a uh, name. Actually, we're going to give it a site, which is a string. Sorry, I can't make up my mind what to call this. Let's call it a link string, and then zip code, which is going to be a integer, I believe. Could not find generator weather. Oh, sorry, I left off the word scaffold. All right, so run that, and then we're gonna do rake db migrate. And that's gonna take just a second, and that sets up our tables. So now we're gonna start the server back up and go check out what we've got. So back in our browser, refresh the page. Now you can name this stuff whatever you want. Um, I kind of made this stuff up on the fly uh, but I think you're gonna like the end product that we come up with. So we've got we're listing websites. This is the uh, from the website scaffold that we created. We can create a new website, a name with an identifier and I'm gonna show you exactly what this does in just a second. Um, what we're gonna do is Back in, let me go back to the article. 
Um, back on the first um, post in the web development course, the first program post, I put an assignment in here about um, coming up with a way to find the headline of sites and then I put that in the solutions in here. So what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna go out and we're gonna get the headlines from sites that we have stored in the database and then we're gonna display the headline for today. So the idea is that like maybe you wake up in the morning and you come in and you get on your dashboard and you have like your top 10 news sites or something and you have it displayed you know, right there and you can click through instead of going to all the sites. Realistically, I don't know how useful this is, um, but I think it's a cool way to demonstrate how you can use some of the stuff at all the different places. So we're going to look at models, views, controllers, and get a good feel for how to do some different things. Okay, so let's get to doing some real stuff. So the first thing I want to show you is how to start putting together the dashboard. So we're, I'm going to open up the dashboard controller and I'm going to open up this index view. So let's get rid of all this stuff. Um, I guess we can call it dashboard for now. Um, now let's create an unordered list. Um, and then we're going to iterate through uh, some websites. Okay, so for each website, what we're going to end up doing is creating a list item. And I want to print out the website dot name. And I want to print out, um, well, for now, let's just do that. Just print out the website dot name. So I have intentionally not done something here, but I want to show you kind of how to see errors and solve them. So now if we go back here, it's going to tell me undefined method each for nil class. When you see this type of thing, look at what's undefined and it's telling you that whatever is undefined directly to the left of it is empty. So at websites right here is empty. So what we need to do is realize, oh, we didn't actually set this in the controller because remember to get access to something in the view you need to create an instance variable in the controller okay now if we refresh the page should have nothing right so the next thing you need to do is go to slash websites and create a few new websites um, you can leave the identifier blank but you can just go ahead and put in the name of a website. You can leave off HTTP and all that stuff. Um, just create the website and get a list of websites going. Um, probably some kind of news site is best for what we're doing, but that's whatever you want is fine. Um, then come back here to the dashboard and you should see have these printed out now. The next thing I want to do is actually print out the top headline for each of these sites out beside here. Um, this is gonna take us into uncharted territory. Um, if there's things that are over your head, don't worry about it. Um, in future courses, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into some of this. Um, but go ahead and just follow along and um, do your best to understand. And hopefully you get some good stuff out of this.